Ang tagal-tagal mo kasi! Agree! Oo oh, nga! So late! Guys, tama na yan! Ano ba? Mag-start na lang tayo mag-vlog. Tara na mo! Tara na mo! Let's go! Let's go! Hello mga kamais! Kami ang mulat at aktibo sa mga informasyon ng mga psikologista. So, for today's video, pag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa carbon footprint emission. So, Jaira, ano nga ba ang carbon footprint emissions? Ang carbon footprint emission nakita nyo ang unang skit? May kanya-kanyang nagsiselpon, hindi naman nanonood ng TV, nag-aaksaya lang ng kuryente. Ayun ang example ng carbon footprint emission. Climate change is one of the most pressing issues facing our planet today. The scientific consensus is clear. Human activity is causing the planet to warm, and this warming is having a devastating impact on our environment and our way of life. One of the key drivers of climate change is our carbon footprint. Our carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases that we emit into the atmosphere through our activities such as food, consumption, transportation, and household energy. According to Serio 2015, The Philippines has a high carbon footprint which is largely driven by the country's reliance on fossil fuels for energy and transportation. They also note that the carbon footprint of Filipinos varies significantly depending on income level and lifestyle choices. Yung pala yun, no? Akala ko pag sinabing transportation, pollution ka agad, meron din pala ang carbon footprint. Oh. Oo nga, maaari nating sabihin magkamukha ang pollution at carbon footprint emission, pero yung dalawa na yun is magkaibang bagay sila. Most people lack awareness about carbon footprint emissions, often confusing them with pollution. Despite the interconnectedness of the two, both are still different. Cell in 2023 defines carbon footprint as the total amount of carbon dioxide emissions associated with all activities performed by individuals or entities like buildings, corporations, or countries. It encompasses direct emissions from fossil fuel combustion and manufacturing, heating, and transportation, as well as the emission required for generating the electricity consumed in the production of goods and services. Additionally, the carbon footprint concept frequently takes into account emissions of other greenhouse gases, including methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons. Consequently, our daily activities contribute to carbon footprint emissions, which create health risks if it keeps happening. Teka lang, parang nagugutom ako. Pwede ba mumili naman tayo sa labas? Oo nga no. Tara, tara. Tara, tara, tara. Kaya yung nasabi mo na yung mga transportation is one of example ng carbon footprint emission. Pwede oh. yung mga dumadaan na vehicles dyan is example na. Oo, oh, yung mga dumadaan na, ano na, dyan sa sakyan, example yan ng carbon footprint emission. Pero gaano ba kadami yung carbon footprint emission dito sa Pilipinas? May idea ba kayo? Siyempre naman, mula tatakibo nga tayo sa mga informasyon, di ba? 
in 2022, the amount of carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions from energy consumption in the Philippines amounted to approximately 146.5 million tons of carbon dioxide. This reflects an increase from the previous year's total of 135.8 million tons of carbon dioxide. Because of the rising amount of use of carbon dioxide, we are getting nearer to climate change that would affect the lives of every living species on Earth. And eh, paano naman sa Valenzuela? May data ba kayo about doon? Siyempre naman. The atmospheric composition of Valenzuela underwent the staggering transformation as the unfortunate consequence of tree cover loss. Throughout this period, an average of 111 metric tons per year were carelessly released into the air. As if to compound the already dire situation, a grand total of 2.44 kilotons of carbon dioxide was mercilessly emitted, exacerbating the existing environmental concerns. These shocking figures serve as a stark reminder of the pressing need for sustainable practices and afforestation initiatives to rectify the damage inflicted upon Valenzuela's delicate ecosystem. In 2019, Valenzuela City's carbon footprint was estimated to be 1.8 metric tons per capita. This is higher than the national average of 1.1 metric tons per capita. The largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Valenzuela City is transportation. In 2019, transportation accounted for 48% of the city's total emissions. The city is taking steps to reduce its carbon footprint. In 2019, the City Council passed Ordinance Number 2019-007, also known as the Valenzuela City Energy Efficiency and Conservation Ordinance. It requires all new buildings to be energy efficient. The city is also investing in renewable energy sources such as solar power. Dami niyo namang alam, ba't di ko alam yan? Tara na nga, bumili na tayo. Teka, teka. Since bibili na rin naman tayo, ba't nila din naman yung mga tao mga kasalubong natin? Kung ano yung, na, yung ideya nila kapag narinig nila yung carbon footprint emission? Oo nga. Pagandang hapon po. Ako po si Jenny Bulaga. Tapos kasama ko po yung mga kagrupo ko. So kami po ay nasa unang taon ng BS Psychology. Tapos nandito po kami ngayon para magtanong lang po ng mga tatlong katanungan para po sa aming case study. Nakatira po ba kayo sa Maysan? Yes. Taga Maysan po ba kayo? Opo. Uh, Taga Maysan po ba kayong dalawa? Opo. 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 So, ang unang tanong ko po is, ano, may idea ka po ba kung ano po yung carbon footprint emission? Wala. Unang tanong po is, may idea po ba kayo kung ano po yung carbon footprint emission? Wala. So, ang unang tanong ko po is, may idea po ba kayo kung ano po yung carbon footprint emission? Wala. Pangalawang tanong po is, gaano po kayo kadalas mag-commute or nagko-commute po ba kayo? Hindi po. Pangalawang tanong po, um, nagko-commute po ba kayo? Kung opo, na, gaano po kadalas? Mm, sa one week, mga three times. Pangalawang tanong po is, nagko-commute po ba kayo? Kung nagko-commute po, na, po kayo, gaano po kadalas? Often. Hindi, hindi masyado, hindi masyado. And yung last na tanong ko is, ano, ikaw din po ba yung tipong na nagpapaandar ng TV and hindi naman po talaga nanonood is nag-cellphone lang po, ganun. Yes. <laughs> last tanong na po is, kayo din po ba yung tipong na nagpapaandar po ng TV tapos hindi naman po talaga nanonood, nag-cellphone lang po? Hindi. Yun lang po, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Last na tanong po is, kayo po ba yung tao na nagpapaandar po ng TV tapos hindi naman po talaga mananadi? Tapos ang gagawin niyo po is mag-cellphone lang? No. Hindi rin.
ang dami palang mga tagamaysan na hindi aware sa carbon footprint emission, no? Oo nga eh. Buti na lang nandito tayo para ipaalam yun. Oo, tas isa pa yung lugar natin sa mga nag-aambag ng carbon footprint emission sa mundo. Paano mo naman nasabi yan? Nag-research kasi ako, be. The population in Barangay Maysan as determined by Census 2020 was 23,081, broken down into 6,954 households or an average of 3.95 members per household. Each household is an important contributor to greenhouse gas emissions by burning oil or gas and using electricity generated from coal, natural gas, and oil. In addition, Barangay Maysan also has a more than 30 restaurants, canteens, and eateries that are using gas stoves and consuming electricity more than to a single household. Maysan Road is one of the main east-west thoroughfares of Valenzuela, Philippines. It is a narrow street with only one lane in each direction, making it one of the most congested streets in northern Metro Manila. The vehicles, burning fuels, and contributing a huge amount of greenhouse gases Tara, ako na magliligpit. Eh, hindi naman. Sige, sige. Uy, te, ba't di mo pinapatay yung tubig habang naguhugas ka? Teka na, mag-reply lang ako. Alam mo bang nakakadagdag sa carbon footprint emission yung pag-aksaya mo ng tubig? Okay, I'm sorry. Bye na nga. Unfortunately, many people are unaware of the true extent of their carbon footprint. This is because the carbon footprint of our lifestyle is often hidden. For example, the carbon footprint of our food is hidden in the production and transportation of the food we eat. The carbon footprint of our clothes is hidden in the production and transportation of the clothes we wear. And the carbon footprint of our home is hidden in the energy we use to power and heat them. We might not be aware of it, yet carbon footprint emissions have a significant impact on our daily life. Carbon footprint emission can also have an impact on GDP growth, household, transportation, industrial, and agricultural. This is based on Sabado et al. 2021. Consider renewable energy sources such as solar or wind power for electricity. Use energy-efficient appliances and lighting. Insulate homes and buildings to reduce heating and cooling needs. Switch to LED bulbs which are more energy-efficient than traditional incandescent bulbs. Choose fuel-efficient and electric vehicles. Maintain and service vehicles regularly to ensure optimal fuel efficiency. Plan and consolidate trips to reduce the number of miles driven. Recycle materials like paper, plastic, glass, and metal. Compose organic waste to reduce methane emissions from landfills. Minimize single-use plastics and packaging. Choose products with minimal packaging. Reduce meat consumption or choose plant-based alternatives. Support local and sustainable agriculture. Minimize food waste by planning meals and using leftovers. Conserve water to reduce the energy required for water treatment and distribution. Plant trees and maintain green spaces as trees absorb carbon dioxide. Choose energy-efficient appliances and fixtures for water use. 
support and advocate for policies that promote renewable energy, energy efficient, and sustainable practices at the local, national, and international levels. Educate yourself and others about the environment impact of various activities. Encourage others to adopt sustainable practices and make informed choices. So mag-out na tayo guys! So dito na po nagtatapos ang aming vlog. Muli kami ang Mulat at Aktibo sa mga Ipo